Hi, this is Jason from Effective Dashboards, helping maintenance and reliability professionals get the most out of Power BI. So welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking you through how you can add labels directly next to lines on a line chart. Okay, so let's get started. So this is what we're going to end up with. We're going to end up with a line chart and the labels are going to be directly next to the lines on the line chart. Now there's a couple of ways you can set you, you can set up a line chart. Obviously, you've got the a line chart like I've got here, which has got um, just multiple measures, and each one of these measures has got uh, a label associated with it. Or you can have a line chart that has got um, a legend that is um, split by by a, a series of categories. So, for example, you may have a line chart that shows cost by department. Okay, so there's the two options, but I'm going to go for the one with the measures. So we're going to end up with this uh, this option here, and there, there's a couple of extra pieces to this video where I'm going to show you how I add in these little dots and the labels to the um, to the latest date data point. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to cover is really just briefly two reasons why this is a good option. Um, the first one is we tend to read from left to right, and as we're reading along the the line. It just helps us to focus directly, spatially, spatially, if we can just see the line and see the cost right next to it, rather than if we've got an example here, where we've got to follow a line, and then we've got to try and reconcile that line with a, an actual um, a, a legend at the top of the page there. Okay, so it just makes it a lot easier to interpret the lines, particularly if you've got anything more than three, four, five lines, you're going to have to consistently look back and, and, and try and figure out which colour corresponds to which line. The The second reason is that it now allows us to use the same colour for multiple lines. Now, we were not able to do that before. So in this example here, I want to use a different colour, um, or I want to use the same de-emphasised colour, so a slightly paler shade of blue for the, the budget and for the cost at this point in the pre for the, the the year-to-date cost the previous year. Okay, so I want to have them as secondary considerations. I don't want them to pop out necessarily, or to um, or to compete for the attention with this line here, which is the actual cost year-to-date that we're interested in. Now, prior to that, if I wanted to do that, I would need to go and create uh, assign the same colour to two labels here, or two lines here. And now, obviously, that's going to make it difficult to understand which one is which if they've both got the same colour. So if I go in here and I was to make the maintenance cost previous year uh, and the, the budget and if I to make both of these to this colour here then you can't tell which one corresponds to which line. Okay, in fact actually, let's just make sure they're both the same colour. Okay, so you can see the top here, which one corresponds to which line, you can't tell. Okay, so a couple of good reasons why it's um, it's really useful to have this option here to directly label up the lines with the actual um, the series label or the measure. Okay, so let's actually just go in um, and get stuck in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in here and when it comes to data colours, I'm just going to revert to the default. So to actually activate them is really straightforward and we just go down and we find the data series labels and we're just going to switch those on and here we can see straight away they've been added on to each one of these labels now a couple of things here um, we've got the maintenance cost versus budget year-to-date title here so we know we're looking at maintenance cost so we can actually reduce this a little bit and change this description here so I'll just show you how you can do that um, so you can maybe just change that to be cost year-to-date and that's just going to change it here. Okay, so if you want to change these labels, it's just a case of updating it on the actual in the field in the the list of fields here. So I'll just quickly update some of these, um, and that just saves a little bit of space and saves a little bit of um, repetition. You could even give it a cost as well, but we won't bother doing that at the moment. So the next thing is let's look at some of the actual options under this CD, this um, series labels. So you can change the color. So if we want these to be blue, we can change the colour of these. That doesn't stand out too much. Let's change it to that colour there. Okay, so we can change these colours if we want to. We can... Um, I'll just change it back again for the time being. We are going to play with these colours in, in a second. We can change the position of these. 
to left or right. You can see that's in the left. Now it has actually done a little bit of um, cropping of the actual labels here because this is just far too close to each other. If we make it a bit bigger here, yeah, you can see that's kind of starting to come in now. So you do, you do need to watch out for that. If you've got a, a, a bunched up set of labels, you need to watch for that access to make sure that um, it's not going to be um, hiding some of these. Now Microsoft are, have said they're going to release um, some additional features and work on this to, so we can get lines pointing to each of the labels. Um, so we'll wait for that to come out and see how it looks. Uh, for just now, we'll leave it on the right. You can change the size of the font and change the actual font family for this as well. Um, we can add a background colour. I think it looks okay on the white. I think it's fine. Um, and then we can add some word wrap on here. Now the word wrap only comes into play when we um, when we play about with the moving this back and forth. So the maximum width that's available, I would just leave that at auto. You can actually configure it. Um, but what happens is as you get closer, you need to get really small there. It's going to word wrap it around. You can see up at the top here. But it does a pretty good job of just allocating some space and keeping it consistent. Um, and it basically fits to the longest measure. So if you didn't need to make it slightly smaller, you can just reduce the size of these descriptions here. So that's um, that's the basic setup options. Um, not much else to it really. Um, so if, if that's all you're interested in, then you know, that's, that's fine. Um, but if you want to see how I actually went and created this additional um, configuration here, then watch on. Okay, so let's start making the changes here to add this uh, additional features. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the colours of the, the lines. Okay, so let's work at the top, top here. And that's pretty straightforward. We're going to leave um, cost here today as being the blue because that's the one we want to emphasise. And then we're going to change these to be slightly lighter. Okay, and we can play with the lightness of these colours, but that seems to be a, 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 nice, um, a nice light colour there. So... That's the first thing. Next, we're going to go and change these labels here, which are under the series label section here that we've just switched on. And we're going to go and scroll at the bottom of this area here, and we're going to customize series. And I'm going to turn on or change the, the actual label colors to make them the same as the actual color of the line. So the first one is the year, the, the cost year to date. So let's make that blue. Then we're going to switch over to the budget, which is going to be, I think, I'm not going to make it, I'm going to make it slightly darker than the line. Same same sort of shade, but slightly darker. And then we're going to choose the final one, which is a previous year. And we're going to go and change that as well. Okay, so good. Starting to look, look a bit better there. Next, we're going to go and think about how we're going to add these little dots in and the, the data labels. Okay, so to do that, I'll explain how I've how I've kind of constructed it. So I've created or created um, three additional measures, each one pretty much mirroring the, the main measures we're using here. So we've got six measures in here. So if I take the, what will we do? We'll take the latest, this one here, right? We've called it, I'll just open up here. So we've called it maintenance cost year to date, latest date only. So what that is doing is it's um, it's returning a value whenever the only when the latest date is um, is is the selected data point. So to do that, I've um, I've created a, a measure that's got two variables. Um, the first one is last date in range. So we use a calculate statement to change the filter context, and we're basically looking for the maximum date across the the maintenance cost table. And we're going to go and find that maximum date across this all selected maintenance costs. So basically what that's doing is it's selecting all of the dates that are in here. In fact, actually, look, let's go and create a table here. Um, it just explains it a little bit better. And now I have created a video on this that um, adds a maximum in and a, a first and a last date to a, a line graph. Um, so I'll leave a link below, but this is just one element of that. We just want the last date with this one. So let's create a quick table here. And we'll move that up into here, just so we can see it. And we'll be able to see what this is doing. So I'm going to put the date in here. We've got our cost, maintenance cost year date. Okay, and we can see that's uh, maintenance cost up to October. 
and we've got this maintenance cost year to date, last date only. Okay, so we're only interested in, in the last date. And we can see what that does. It returns no value for anything unless it's the last date in the in the series of this graph here. So the, all the dates selected, if it's the last date in that range, the max date in that range, it's going to return this value here. So that is what is happening in this measure here. Okay, so the first thing it's doing is it's determining what is the last date. Okay, it's going to find in that last day. That's what that does. In this example here, it's going to be the um, the first of October, and then the result is a switch statement. Again, I'll leave a, a, a video below that a link to a video below that explains what a switch statement does. Um, probably could have used an if statement, but I just use a, a switch statement. And basically, it's saying it's true. So return this value if it's true. If the selected value, okay, so whatever value we're on here, is of the maintenance date. Uh, maintenance cost date is equal to this value here that's been stored as a, a, a variable. Okay, so if this date here is the, the 31st of October, um, so the 1st of October, which is the maximum date here in this date range here, then we're going to display this um, maintenance cost year to date measure. And then the default is to just to display a blank, not to display anything. Okay, so that's what's happening there. I'll just get rid of this now. So let's add this into our graph. So year to date, last date only. Okay, so what we, can, what we can see has happened here is it's added one data point and it's just that very last data point there. And that's what's given us this, um, this dot here. Okay, there's no other data points here, just this very last one. And um, let's go and configure that. So we're going to go in. And, and, and I've created basically a mirror image of each one of those for the other dates. In fact, actually, let's add those in. So I've created one that's only going to show the last budget date. There's it there. And I've created one that's only going to show the last date for the um, the, co the cost year to date previous year. Okay, and you can download this file. There's a link below to the resources section, so you can download this file. So here we've got to, and we want to change these data points to be blue, and then the, the light blue there. So they're just just completely consistent with the with the actual line color and the actual value there, the label. So go into data colors, and here we can see these ones here. Here, and we're going to change the maintenance cost year to date latest to be blue, and we can see that. And then we'll change these ones to be the same as the other. In fact, we'll make it a slightly darker one there. And we'll make it a slightly darker one there. Okay, so there's a little bit of consistency there. So it's good that it's starting to come together a little bit more there. Um, next, we're going to add in some labels. Okay, so because we've got these measures that have got essentially on a line graph, but it's only got one data point, which is a very final data point, we can switch on the labels just for that particular measures. So let's go in and do that. So we're going to switch the labels on. Now it's going to switch them on for everything. We don't want them on for everything. So we'll go down again to customize CDs. And we're going to go and select year to date. Um, that's the first one, cost year to date. We don't want to see labels for that. And then we'll select cost budget year to date. We don't want to see labels for that. And then we'll select cost previous year, year to date. We don't want to see the labels, so we're switching show to off. Now we can see the labels have been left on here, so it's good. So let's go back and just change a few things about the labels that are shown. So maintenance cost uh, year to date, latest date only. Uh, let's go and change the label to be blue. And let's also go and change the actual position to be under. And we'll do the same with these other ones. So I'll change this one to be this color here. And we'll change this one here, the previous, previous year, year to date, to be this color as well. Okay, now there's a little bit of an issue here with, with the how it's been actually displayed on the screen. In fact, let's go and change that one to uh, position under as well. Okay, it's not quite 
it's not quite um, giving it a bit of space. There is um, there is a way you can solve this. Again, I've got a video below um, that um, I'll leave a link to, but I'm not going to go into it here. Um, but anyway, we can see these labels are um, roughly, you know, they're displaying okay. Not perfect. Okay, so I think we're pretty much there. The next, the last thing I want to do is I just want to make this a little bit bolder. So let's go into this data series here for the series labels. And what I'm going to do there is I'm going to go to this year to date. Um, it's already blue. I don't want to increase the font size because if you increase the font size, it doesn't look particularly great. It looks inconsistent with other fonts, really. But I do think you can use this bold. Okay, use this bold, and it just helps it pop a little bit. So there we have it. We've got this. Um, we've got ourselves this. Um, this one here. It's actually. Yeah, the auto adjust isn't quite working properly. Here we go. If I put that in, like I'd still put it underneath. Um, because that's where we've told it to put it. But anyway, I think you can get the gist of it. Um, one last thing. You can see this is actually quite big now. And there's quite a lot of white space and a bit of wasted space here. I'll just explain how to fix that. It's basically auto-adjusting this space to the largest measure description. And we can see we've got some quite big descriptions here. So let's go in and we'll just trim these down. Um, and we'll just put LD for latest date. Quite a lot of... Okay, and we can see, you know, we could probably even make it a little bit smaller. In fact, let's um, let's do that. Get rid of the the um, this um, this maintenance at the front here. So just a little bit of an extra kind of consideration. Yeah, it's made it that little bit smaller. Okay, so hopefully you found that useful. A um, little bit extra stuff here that's probably isn't really related to these data series labels, but if you you know if you want to kind of just understand a little bit how um, a little bit more about how I was actually dealing with these. Oh, one last thing I need to do is actually change this line here. So let's go into our um, shapes, and we're going to go to customize series. I'm going to choose the budget for the you know, sorry the previous year year to date. And I'm going to change this solid line here to be a dash line. Okay. So, yeah, that's it. So, I like to, I, I do like to differentiate them because it just actually shows you that that's important. And, that, that, I don't know, it just kind of looks a little bit better. That seems to be, in my mind, less important, again, than this one here. And then that's the most important line there, which is the one I want to focus on. So, if you found this, use, this um, video useful, then... Feel free to give it a thumbs up, that would be much appreciated, that'd help me out. And if you're finding this for the first time and you want to keep up to date with the latest videos, then click the subscribe button and um, I release a video more or less every week when you get a notification. So thanks for listening and I'll talk to you in the next video.